All right, and here we have the unboxing of the Firebat Mini PC. Yes, looks can be deceiving because from the outside of this box, it don't really give you much, right? There's no specs, there's no labeling minus a model number and a... Uh, I should take that back. Here's some specs right here. Uh, if you blink, you will miss it. So we have the Firebat Mini PC uh, model number here. It is white. Now, this, check this out. This has uh, a, we'll go over the specs here in a minute. This will give you a quick overview. Let me open it up and uh, show you what we're dealing with. Because as I mentioned, looks can be deceiving from the outside. Looks like a pretty basic, right, mini computer. Well, just wait till you open it. So, slide this out. Throw this back here. Again, not much labeling, right? Not much labeling at all. Open this sucker up. Now, this is a beast, right? This is an absolute beast of a computer. So, on the inside, you have basic padding, right? You got the PC here. You have a stand that I will show you how it works here shortly. And you have power supply. So, in the box... This does run off of USB Type-C power. Those of you that love USB Type-C, like myself, will be ecstatic about this. Uh, here's one half of the power cable. Here's the second half that includes the power brick. Now, this is a 20 volt, 5 amp, 100 watt Type-C adapter. Type-C right there. And uh, this plugs into the wall. What else comes in here? Start, quick start guide. Here you have uh, some screws because these screws go to a SATA, SATA connector. So you can add external storage internally inside the device here. You can open it up, add the little uh, uh, Samsung or uh, Crucial um, SATA SSD inside. So they give you a nice connector there. And here it is. Look how small this thing. This thing is very small. Packs a big, big punch. Look at this thing. Wow. All white matches my all white studio. Nice big fan on top. You, you, you don't see that. Uh, with these mini PCs, heating is an issue. Because everything is... they. Some of these pr uh, pack... A punch when it comes to performance the CPU very very high performance CPU any little small compact component can generate a lot of heat right well this is very unique because you don't ever see a fan this size some of them will put little mini fans inside of it never gonna see this nice big fan up top look at that type C power we'll go over the peripherals here Excuse me, the uh, the components. So here you have labeling. Now, this mini PC, as I mentioned, this is the Ry AMD. This packs a punch. Check this out. AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS CPU. Now, max boost up to 5.1 gigahertz. This is running 8 Zen 4 cores, 16 threads. This is uh, technology, what is it, uh, TSMC 4 nanometer. So it's basically the latest and greatest uh, CPU for these mini PCs. And uh, they actually have some new generations coming out uh, that are actually rolling out right now. Um, but for the price, this is probably your best bet as far as the uh, keeping the cost down but maximizing your performance. This is definitely it, right? So inside, this comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, 5600 megahertz RAM, with a maximum storage capacity of 64 gigabytes of RAM. Again, it comes with 16 gigs, so you have two 8 gigabyte as dual channel, two 8 gigabyte slots of RAM pre-installed. You can install up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, DDR5. Now, you can run four 
excuse me, you can run three 4K displays off of here, right? So you have a USB Type 4 plug here. This is a Thunderbolt. Very rare. You do not see that that often. Thunderbolt 4 USB Type C connection allows for, I think, up to like 40 gigabytes of uh, uh, 40 gigabytes per second of data. So you can run a display off of there. You can run a display off of the HDMI 2.0 up top, and then your display port down here. So three displays running at 4K. You also have, let's see, a 2.5. You have two Ethernet connections. Now this is going to be your power right here. USB Type-C, that's where your power is going to go. This is the back of the device. So you'll have um, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, a 1 gigabit Ethernet port. As I mentioned, that's actually a, a HDMI 2.1 up top. And then you have your display port down there. And then you have two USB 2.0 uh, top and bottom right there. You have a bunch of vents for uh, air filtration, right? Lots of airflow throughout here to keep it nice and cool. And then around front, you have the power switch, which is right here. Next to that, you got your two in one audio and microphone jack. You have two. USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second connections. Pro that's the latest and greatest USB Type A ports right there. And then, as mentioned earlier, you have your USB 4.0 USB Type C, 40 gigabits per second connection right there. You can run a display off of there. It's power delivery. You can also uh, power a device. Uh, maybe your phone's running low. Just plug it in there with the Type-C. This computer will charge your phone as well. And then this is the light switch. So this will light up. It has RGB lighting, LED lights up top. This will turn it on and off and or filter, uh, switch through the different modes. Quick note, if you are interested in upgrading this device, the user manual, I was going through it. Most of it's in... Uh, not English, uh, but if you flip it over, it does have a section in English. Two little short pages. Basic instructions goes over everything we just described that's that's on the device, but also upgrades. It's very upgradable, right? So if you want to install a new MVNE uh, SSD, it does use a Gen 4 M.2 SSD internally. You can upgrade that. So you had it also the RAM if you want to install... If you want to max it out at 64 gigabytes of RAM, quick and easy change. So what you do is telling you basically take these screws out here, you lift up this top part, and then you can easily change the SSD and the RAM with just taking this bottom top off. And then the SATA installation, if you want to install an external hard drive, Internally, it has a adapter, right? So you, with that same t uh, top that you take off, actually be the bottom. Take the bottom off, um, just the same way as you would do with the RAM and the SSD. It tells you how to install. If you have a 2.5 SATA drive, it goes on. It, you can install it on the inside of this uh, bottom part that comes off. Simple and easy instructions on how to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and fire this sucker up. I have my portable monitor here, and as mentioned, you can run this with a one single cable. Remember, USB Type-C? So I have the Type-C cable going to the portable monitor. This computer will power the monitor through one cable. So you'll have display and power through one port. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Now, for mouse, I have a dongle here. I have a mouse with a dongle, so I'll simply plug that one in right here. Just like that. Last thing we need is power, right? So let's go ahead and get the power cord. You can also put, this comes with a stand, right? So you can put it in here if you want, like this. Nice and easy. 
There's two tabs stop it right there, so you can actually throw this one to the side. Hide that cable behind here, just like that. Off to the side, just like that. Now, let me grab the cable here. And I did plug the Type-C power adapter down at the bottom, and this simply goes in the back of the device. Wrap this around here, and we'll get it started. And if you want to put it out of the way, you can put it behind the monitor. I don't believe there's a VESA mount, is there? Oh, there is. I think that's a VESA mount. I'm not sure. Simply plug that in. So we have power. Look, there you go. You have display and power to the display, and then I have my dongle for my mouse right there. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we got. Wow, check that out. That's freaking cool. You, you're supposed to be able to, as you can tell, the fan is spinning, toggle between the different... Huh. Or you can turn it off, right? Or you can have the white light. The white light matches everything in here, doesn't it? There we go. And there's your display. Just like that. And then once this gets up and running, easily pair a uh, Bluetooth keyboard to it. And away you go. So I'll let it, I'll let it get started up and then we'll, we'll double check the internals. Let me, let me get signed in. All right, and as we get to the home screen now, if you do not have a Y, look, uh, to set this up, obviously you can't pair a Bluetooth right out the box because you can't pair the Bluetooth. you got to get to the home screen. So that's why having a, either a wired mouse plugged in or a mouse with a dongle works. Now, I'm using the on-screen keyboard because this is strictly Bluetooth. There is no uh, wired or dongle with this one. But we can easily pair it uh, in the settings. Now, let's get it. Um, let's go ahead and connect it to a network. And then let's uh, pair the keyboard. Here is a list of pre-installed applications on this device. Um, looks like the basic... Let's see if we can get a closer shot. Looks like the basic um, applications, right? Nothing crazy. Um, you have the basic, you have Google Chrome pre-installed. Very interesting. We will look into that. Uh, Microsoft Edge. Snipping tools, sticky notes, terminal, weather, Xbox... I'm gonna install a clean, fresh version of Chrome. Okay, so let's go to... Okay, here is system information. Let me expand that. Now this is a Microsoft, 11, Microsoft Windows 11 Home. Let's see... Ryzen 7 7840HS. Integrated uh, GPU with the Radeon 780M graphics. Let's see, anything else stick out? Secure boot stays off. Uh, installed a RAM, 16. I'm not going to upgrade it to 32, but just for this unboxing and setup, we will leave it as such. All right, now let me, in, let me connect to a network, install Chrome. And we will um, look into that pre-install of Chrome. Normally, they don't come pre-installed. So I'll look into it. Let me sign into the network. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> whenever, you, whenever you get a new PC, there is a gang of updates. 
So we have uh, 22 H2 update. I wonder if this is going to get 22 H, 23 H2. Not sure. Uh, well, it definitely is, but uh, that's the latest version of Windows. I may have to sign into my developer mode. Um, let me download all this. Let me install all this. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do Chrome. Let me download that real quick. Hang on. Now we're running a speed test uh, via Wi-Fi. Uh, we do have two gigabit Ethernet connection. Uh, again, this is over Wi-Fi. So with a two gigabit Ethernet uh, port connection, we get 329 megabytes in the download and then 220 on the upload. This does have a Intel AC, what is it, 200 Wi-Fi Bluetooth chip, so it's got Wi-Fi 6. And it has Bluetooth version 5.2. Now I looked into settings, privacy, security, I've looked into cookies, I've looked into what has access. Apparently there is no pre-installed software, there are no cookies, there are no extensions that are installed on Chrome. Chrome was pre-installed, right? Um, but uh, now I did uninstall it, obviously as you, as you saw, I uninstalled the pre-installed Chrome. And then I went and downloaded Chrome on my own, downloaded that, and then I'm obviously just double, triple checking, making sure all the privacy and security uh, settings are all good here on this device. Um, it can never be safe enough, right? So uh, the default search, in search engine is Google, right? Did eSIM Studios podcast search and it... Uh, went to Google and searched uh, searched us up. So, no extensions. Uh, let's see if there is. Let me delete this. Uh, updates, updates, updates. Boy, oh boy, there's a lot of updates. So, let's see if they're ready. Almost ready. Okay. So, um, this will do it. Look, I am, this is the first part. Uh, I'm going to have multiple videos of this PC. I'm going to, uh, this is, this will complete the unboxing and setup of it. Um, going through the file system and everything. Um, everything looks legit. No pre-installed malware. No pre-installed ap any applications, really. Um, but it, it seems, it appears, it's nice and safe. Unlike some other uh, mini PC companies that do pre-install malware. This one had nothing on it. I just went over everything. Uh, let's see. It looks to be a good computer, right? So this was the unboxing. This is the setup. Now is the fun part. Well, this was fun, but it gets even more fun. I'm going to start using it, hooking stuff up. I'm going to, um, I don't play games, but I do a bunch of video editing and uh, um, photo editing and stuff like that. So I'm going to start using this sucker. I will link, uh, when I do my full review of this here in about a week or two, I'm going to link that full review in this video. So if you're watching this, um, let's say a month from now, from when I'm filming it, look for a link in the bottom or in and or in the description of this uh, video. I'll link my full review in here. And then I should, I'll probably put a... Uh, tab as well up on the top corner or something uh, linking the full review as well but I did want to get an unboxing going I did want to get a setup going you can see how easy it is right basically you have two cables and a mouse and you're hooked up you don't have to have some elaborate um, setup nice and small you can take this with you in a backpack right you can take it to and from work to and from your office plug it in it's got oh yeah you know what so on the back here, remember you can do three dis three displays on this. Easily run three displays in 4K. USB Type-C, which I got now. And then look at this. Remember, it has the... Uh, let's see. It has a HDMI here. So that's the second display. You have USB Type-C, one display. HDMI, that's two displays. And then you have a display port. Now, I did not have a display port cable. I don't play video games. So, all I have is HDMI cables. So, if you go to Amazon, and I'll link this in the description as well. If you go to Amazon, 
you can pick up a display port to HDMI adapter. So you can plug this in your display port just like this. Plug it in there just like that, and then you can plug in a normal HDMI cable right in there, and that will give you essentially two HDMI ports and then a Type C port for video or power or charging your device or whatever you want. So, um, very nice. I'm going to take uh, advantage of that uh, Ethernet port there and get rolling. So, uh, looks to be very nice. It, the, is the is the fan even on? can't even hear it the fan is on but you cannot even hear it which is a huge bonus right because how many oh, well look I have another one down here see that one I got another one down there when the fan comes on it's not loud but you can definitely hear it right it's a little noisy this one I nothing literally nothing um, and it's not even hot to the touch right let me try the other one the other one gets a little warm, I've noticed, but w during heavy usage. But this one, I mean, the fan is on because I can feel it has airflow. So that's very, look, that, these are little things that uh, people overlook. The overheating issue, I know a lot of these manufacturers have tried to tackle that issue. Again, when you put a super high performance uh, uh, processor in a very small compact size, one of the things you got to worry about, right? Heat buildup. Well, they put vents all around. They put a nice big fan in there that makes zero noise. You can feel the airflow, which is good. And uh, away we go. So it looks to be a really, really viable option. If you're looking for... Look, okay, real quick. I don't play games. I'm not a gamer. I stopped playing games and I was, uh, you know, 10 years old, right? I do all my PC stuff is all um, eSim Studios based. So I'm editing videos as I mentioned, editing photos as I mentioned, in the normal business stuff, emails, uh, computer program, uh, random computer programs, um, mainly internet based. But this is perfect. Even if you are a gamer, this will run AAA games, the top notch games. This will do it. I just don't do it. Um, but this is perfect for a price, right? If you just need something for the home, something for the office, to uh, tackle all of your needs, video editing, uh, all the way to emails, this will do it. And it's a fraction of the price, right? You don't have to get a... There's so many streamers that I hear on YouTube say, oh, I got to upgrade my system. I got to get a gaming uh, PC for streaming. No, you don't. You don't need a gaming PC. Those are... A thousand bucks, two thousand, even three thousand dollars. Why would you spend even a thousand dollars? Why would you spend that? I believe this one's four fifty, and this is the top of the line mini PC. Four hundred fifty bucks for something like this, and I already have a display. I had a keyboard, so all you need is this. This and the the CPU is top of the line, so it will last you, you know, five, six years, seven, probably seven years, honestly. Um, now, not for heavy duty um, video editing, but you know, you know what I mean. Like for normal home office use, this will last you years. Fraction of the price, um, as you can tell, not much pre-installed, which is good. There's almost zero bloatware. Um, it's nice and quiet. It's you know you can tuck it away under the cabinet. I'm gonna leave mine up top because it matches everything. You can turn these lights off, right? Oh, that now you can see the fan. Um, so the, again, this is a very, very viable option for whatever you do. It's got a bunch of connections. You got the, uh, Thunderbolt type USB type C four, which again, not many people think about that is a huge bonus. You can transfer up to 40 gigabytes per second per second with that Thunderbolt, right? I know a lot of iPhone users, iOS users are familiar with Thunderbolt, um, a lot of Android users probably are not, right? And those typically are found on the high-performance Intel-based CPUs. I don't deal with Intel. I don't like Intel, never have, and I, and I never will. I've tried and tested with Intel. I've given them two, three, four, five, five chances. And I made the switch to AMD 
um, every PC I own got to have an AMD processor or I'm not using it. Uh, it's that big of a difference. So Thunderbolt with a AMD processor is not that common and they did it here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this PC restarted, get it fully updated and start having fun. If you have any questions whatsoever, please hit me up in the comments. Be more than happy. There's not much on this online. There's just not. I did a uh, did my extensive homework uh, these last few days, and there's like a couple of YouTube videos, and that's it. So they're a relatively new company. So I wanted to dig into the software a little bit, and I might do some more uh, just to make sure everything's nice and, and uh, legit, uh, and capable for you, the viewer, to use. Uh, and it appears to be. It appears to be that. So if I come across anything, uh, I will bring to your attention. Subscribe to the channel so you get all the updates and news. I know we typically don't do PCs or mini PC, um, mainly geared towards phones and phone accessories, but uh, this is a mobile technology YouTube channel. So this is technically a uh, mobile PC, right? You can still small, you can take it with you in a purse, in a backpack, and uh, away you go. So I'm going to restart this. I'm going to have some fun and uh, look for the full review coming soon. Eason Studios, peace out. All right, so after a few days of use out of this Firebat, I can say I really, really like this mini PC. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, during the unboxing and during the setup, um, I did a speed test through Wi-Fi and... Uh, it was not that great. Now, it turns out I was just a bad spot as far as where I was located compared to the mesh Wi-Fi router. I maneuvered around the Wi-Fi router and uh, the Wi-Fi performance is really good. So the Wi-Fi module in here, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module is really good. Um, I have it plugged in to the Innocent... 27 inch 4k monitor via hdmi cable i was running a usb type c as well here's the type c that goes to the innocent monitor that works perfectly through the thunderbolt 4 display type c it's great look the fan on here you cannot hear it is essentially silent much more quieter than the fan in here. Uh, you can hear when this one kicks on. You cannot hear when this one kicks on. Or I guess it's always on. It's an always on fan. But you cannot hear it. Uh, let me pause this video. I have another fan going on in here. Let me see if we can hear it. Hang on. Now. I think the fan we're hearing is from there. Because I tested that, I turned this one off earlier and just was running this, and you cannot hear the fan. So, this is really, really good mini PC. I actually really like it. Um, been using it over the last few days, and it's phenomenal. Um, again, you have the light switch here, which toggles the lights. You have the Thunderbolt 4. USB type C, I believe it's 3.1. You have a USB type A 3.2, USB type A 3.2, the blue ones. You got a headphone and uh, 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 headphone and microphone jack, power button. And let's go to the back. And around the back, power, type C power. 100 watt power. I have my Ethernet plugged in here. 2.5 gigs. I get 2.2 gigs of download speeds. And you have a 1 gig Ethernet port as well. You have a HDMI. You have a display port. And then you have USB Type A. Two of them back here. Uh, these are both 3.0. Not they're not the blue. It's not the blue ones, but they are 3.0. Just not the super super fast speed. Um, but you got two of them on the front, which is good. But uh, not does not get hot. Actually, this one down here is a little warmer. This one here, super cool. So, 
let's run the because I'm running a streaming streaming setup here and I was streaming from this just the other day let me maneuver this hang on so here are when the the Ethernet ports good right so let's go to I think the speed let me try this one So the Ethernet port on here is are phenomenal. That's, that's more than what I pay for, actually. Now let me unplug it and we will test the Wi-Fi out. Give me one second. So let's go ahead and unplug the Ethernet and we'll just run this on Wi-Fi now. It, is, it has improved since the last time I tested it. Again, it's not due to the mini PC having a bad Wi-Fi card. It was due to my Wi-Fi mesh router being in a bad spot. So I unplugged the Ethernet. Let's test the Wi-Fi. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm on Wi-Fi now. Right there. So let's go ahead and test the Internet speed. much better now that's about average that's about what i was getting uh on all my devices uh that's what i about what i get on my phone so um yes the ethernet cable when plugged in gets much better speeds but that's what it's supposed to be right so this is about average this is what i get on my on most of my phones on my laptop on so the wi-fi card in this firebat mini pc is on par does not it is not it does not suck <laughs> i think when i first tested it on in the unboxing video or setup video it was not that great well that's because again my rough my wi-fi router was not properly positioned now i set it up to get an optimal uh, spot of the house so all my devices get good wi-fi but i always plug everything in so awesome mini pc love this thing um it's a, I believe it's a great choice if you're looking for something very, very powerful um, that is not that expensive, pick up one of these. Now, you're going to need a monitor. As you can see in front of you, I had a monitor. Or, you know, look, Innocent, Innocent, you can get a, uh, you can even hook up a uh, portable monitor, but you're also going to need a mouse and a keyboard. But... Phenomenal little mini PC. Love this thing. Holler at me if you've got any questions. Uh, um, shoot them off in the comments. Questions, comments. Uh, I check them every day. So that will wrap it up. Let me plug this um, Ethernet cable back in. And we are going to have some more fun with this thing. I will update you all here probably in a week, another week or so. And let you know how um, everything else is going with this. So appreciate the time. And I will check you all later. Peace.